Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 3 of the 1966 Admiral PG-919. In our last episode, uh, we fixed the horizontal frequency problem, which turned out to be a core that was not turn <coughs> excuse me, turning inside of the housing here because it was stuck, and this was just kind of rotating, even though it felt like it was connected to something. So the problems that remain are some vertical nonlinearity. It's really stretched on one side. <coughs> And turning the controls and stuff really isn't happening, so my suspect capacitors in the vertical circuit here need to be changed. And lastly, the sound uh, and the picture do not track. So if you're fine-tuning, you can get sound but no picture, and picture but no sound. So obviously something in the sound circuit, the 4.5 megahertz trap or whatnot, is probably to blame. So the first thing let's do is um, let's replace the remaining white L... LM Co. Yes. Those capacitors there. Those go away. Uh, and then we'll touch up the vertical and then we'll work on the sound problem. And just with FYI, in order to gain access to this area, we had to take loose our AC line input jack. And the across the line capacitor is going to get changed out as well. But it's these three guys down here at the bottom for sure. A trace out to the vertical multi vibrator slash amplifier, and then the one that we didn't change back here, uh, which I believe is part of the horizontal feedback network. That big white guy is going to get changed out there. He's a boost capacitor, he needs to go. Uh, <clears throat> they shorten, become violent, and will blow uh, their ceramic bits all over the chassis and do some damage. Uh, and then once we've changed these out, we'll set our vertical, and then we'll work on troubleshooting the sound section. All right, so I have my across-the-line cap in there. It's really hard to see, but... And then those are the film caps, a 0 .033, 0 .015, and a 0 .039, which is basically a 0 .033 and a 0 .0056, which is pretty close to 0 .039 that you're going to get without getting the actual value. And then the 0.047 uh, has two 0.1s in series that are 600 volt capacitors because the original device was 1,000 volt. So that's going to give us our 0.047 that we need for the B-Boost circuit. And uh, if you're curious, that capacitor in question was leaking. And it's got, you know, ooze coming out the side. So that tells you that it was on its way to failure and we needed to change that. Otherwise, it would be a repeat visit here. And considering this was shipped from like Alabama or something, I don't really want to have to see it take another travel if it doesn't have to. So let's get the tubes back in it and let's dial in our vertical. Alright, let's go ahead and fire it up. And we'll do our initial adjustments on the vertical, let it warm up and then readjust it. And see if it holds steady after a while. Your vertical. Alright. Our horizontal's a little bit off again. Definitely have a a weak tuner of some kind. <coughs> like weak AGC or something. See how we have no sync? It's like really tired. Like one to shift all over the place. Well, we definitely have excessive vertical sweep. Let's turn this down. And we'll start off at minimum with both controls. I'm going to have to keep continuously readjusting the vertical in order to get things right here. So typically the height control will uh, extend the bottom and the linearity will extend the top. And we're just looking for geometrically similar. You can see that there's some hum in the picture too. So given the fact that we have a weak tuner signal... I wonder if uh, 
we got a heater to cathode short somewhere. I have time to readjust that. Geometry looks good. Of course, I haven't changed the batteries in this in a while, so that may be part of it. Uh, it really is going to come down to what it looks like with a real picture on it. But uh, we got a little bit more correction to do on the vertical linearity here. And we're just trying to get the best compromise we can across the board. But yeah, lots of hum crawl here, which I hadn't noticed. Then we got vertical instability again. But again, that could be because of weak pitcher. That could be because of tuner problems. That could be because of that thing right there. That's a little better. This thing really doesn't tune very well. We have to check our tuner tubes and our IF tubes. But geometry-wise, those squares are pretty close. And like I said, it is going to change as it warms up. So let's put a real signal into it and come back to it in a while. So this is it after running about 15 minutes and I retouched the uh, vertical linearity a little bit. You can see that the yoke's a little bit tilted. Or actually that could just be a defect in the yoke because the bottom looks cool, the top looks a little slanted. It's not as bright as it could be. I mean, again, our brightness is maxed out. So, but that's the CRT doing that. You can adjust your contrast ratio and make it a little bit more watchable. But it's a respectable picture. And the next problem is... We obviously have some sound issues. The first loud dealing is life and death. You're a great girl. We got it. They started out helping kids. I mean, that's a bad speaker. But also the uh, sound detector is off because when you tune the picture in, the sound gets shittier. Excuse my French there. But, so, but the uh, chassis is very crowded on this, as we all know. And so it's hard to say where the sound adjustment is. And for sure, there's no real access to it from the board side. So I have to take a look at the SAMs and see... Which one of these is the 4.5 megahertz trimmer? Didn't even notice that headphone jack there. We've had this thing how long we're working on it. But the picture part is good. The picture looks really good. Probably as good as this going to get for something with an aging CRT. Now here's something interesting. We intermittently lost sync. I wonder if it's going to do it again. Oh, that was the, uh, never mind, that was the antenna thing coming loose there. So, yeah, the, the tuner is definitely sensitive to a loose connection there. Get that a little bit tighter, and we'll go off channel. Yeah, and that doesn't tune right either. Almost like somebody was messing with the oscillator. It locks in okay. Again, you can always tune off station and adjust the horizontal so that everything's upright. And then go back for a lock-in. But let's see where the uh, where the sound stuff is. Okay, according to the SAMs, uh, A6, you peak for loudest sound. And then clarity is A7 and A8. So, of course, A6... A7 and A8 doesn't look like you can easily get to. So we need to figure out a way we can adjust those because obviously from the top it's not really possible. So it looks like the coil we're after is that one back there with the little tubular thing sticking up and then the one adjacent to it. So they're all way back there. You can't obviously get to it this way. Maybe there is access on the bottom. So I guess we do have some bottom access here uh, for these cores. Doesn't look like anybody's been tweaking on them, so that's good. We do need to do some resoldering on that socket. I can see that it's kind of crummy. 
and also as the sets gotten warmed up it definitely uh, twitches a little bit on the horizontal so uh, I may swap out the horizontal oscillator tube and try again and see if that's happy but anyways let's grab the alignment set and as you can see I got one stashed in here that's white that is the most common one for these cores and I'm going to use this to adjust the cores and we're going to start with uh, 7 and 8 and so 7 looks like the one directly adjacent to the tube which is going to be this guy here let's make sure that fits excuse me a second here it does ibisd.com there we go that's pretty significant again our speaker's still bad it's rubbing but the good thing about it is is that we did get the sound up on it Let's see if i can switch to something that's not so damn choppy Yeah, that's going to break up too. I hate digital. We see the picture freaking out too a little bit. Alright. And then A8. Looks like the one second down. So we got second down here. Yeah, that's pretty much peaked already. And then we'll come back to A6, which is the. Let's see, where's A6? That's the one at the very top up here. So we got that all peaked out. That speaker is pretty trash. So we need to see if we can change that out without too much hassle. Um, or if I even have one that size. So I do not have a speaker this size, which is kind of odd. It's not quite two inches, it's not quite three inches. So I'm going to try an old-fashioned thing, which is bending the frame a little bit to see if I can clear some of the distortion. And it's just basically taking a screwdriver and going to the, uh, the base here where the magnet is and just prying and see if we can get the distortion go away. Yeah, it's not really helping much. I mean, if I force it out, it gets a little better, but not much. Let me play with this a little bit. I'll need two hands. Well, it's a little bit better. But it's still rubbing when you really crank it. Sink is still a little bit touchy. And then I get this occasional twitch, twitch, twitch here. Uh, I swapped the horizontal oscillator too, but that really hasn't changed it much, so it could be a sink issue. But right now it's working. I'm going to try another uh, 8FQ7 here real quick. Just more options, I guess. Alright, I swapped in 
yet another ADF Q7 to see if we can improve this, but not sure it's a totally horizontal problem. And that's going to be a different frequency. Easy to dial in though. Yeah, it's still twitching. So that might be a sync thing. I loosen the nut on the yoke so we can kind of rotate this a little bit. Looking pretty good. I keep losing my remote for this thing here. But I think there may be a defect in the yoke because even if you center it up, it always looks a little bit squished up here in the corner. So there's been a lot of fun. So let's see who's next. The speaker just is what it is. I'm not going to fight that one. That's going to take way too much time. Many, many years ago. And uh, I don't know if you guys can listen. I'm going to check the sync tube real quick, the sync amplifier, and make sure there's no shorts in it. But otherwise, I think I'm going to box this one. Let's take a look at that real quick. Well, according to that, a 6GH8 is our uh, sync here and sync separator. So those are notorious for death. Uh, I'm betting that one's got a problem, but let's check it anyways. All right, so 6GH8 is socket 6. Set the plate at 58. Let's see what we come up with. I will be very surprised if this tube is good. 6GH8s uh, are notorious for failure. They made them in the, probably the billions. And there we go. Fails the short test. Fails the emission, oh yeah, grid emission test. And it's weak there. The second section is plate at 56. It's a little bit better than the first section, but it fails both the short and the grid leakage test. So, yep, that one's getting changed out. And looking around in inventory, I unfortunately do not have any 68 seat. 6GH8s here. Nor do I have any in the stash I was just donated. So I'm going to have to go out to storage and get some. And I will be getting a bunch because, uh, well, they're just known to be bad. All right, so fast forward a bit. I went digging around in my storage and brought, uh, I mean, I could, could have brought the whole box, but I bought five uh, 6GH8s. And we're just going to see. Just start testing them one by one. Basically, the first good one I'm going to pop into the set. So, I'm going to wait for that guy to warm up there. Looks like he's coming around. Yep, still warming up. No shorts, though. These are poles, so I don't expect them to be fancy. Oh, that's right, you have to crank this one up a bit. Because it's uh, 68 and 56. So let's do 68 here for test 1. And 56 for test 2. So that's, yep, that's our first good one there. Let's pop that one in. Alright, so we're going to see if we can squeeze this dude back in here. Since it is a little bit tight in there. Look at this, you can't even get it past the uh, filter can without putting it in a fancy way. So I'm going to need two hands for this. Alright, she's in there. You know what I realized is that if you want to get to that tube way back in there, can't even see it, that little guy there, you're probably going to have to take the tuner out. Because even with this out the way, there's no practical way for you to fit a hand in there to get that tube out. And you certainly can't do it from the top. Now the sound one here, this is even crazier. So you'd have to get this shield up and out of the way. And maybe even pull this tube out to be able to release this from the socket. 
Likewise with this tuner tube here. This can't come out until this is removed from the socket. So if you have a bad tuner tube, you first have to take the shield down, take this loose, then pull this tube out so you can pull this tube out. That's how tight it is in here. That's how really crammed it is. You can get to this one, and you can pull this one out okay. I could barely get to that one, and I had to struggle to put that back in. The only tubes that are easy to replace are the vertical, horizontal, oscillator, and horizontal out. And I haven't even checked to see what type of high voltage rectifier this uses. I'm going to guess it's a stick rectifier because, well, you know, I haven't bothered to open it up yet. But it's working and I'm not going to mess with that. So, the sink tube is in there. Let's power it up and see if we have any more twitchies. All right. Let's see uh, if we get a more stable picture with less twitchiness, since that was our sink amp and separator. Cool noises. Our uh, sound is back to being cruddy. Oh, I see what's up. Dirty tube socket. So we get to do the fun thing of taking this tube out so I can clean this socket. So let's remove power. And we got to see if we can rotate and push this shield down, if it's going to let me do that. And the shield's stuck, so that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a, uh, not a service friendly. And of course, I don't want to break anything, but at the same time, rock this back and forth. Yeah, I don't want to move. Oh, starting to move. Yeah, that tube shield is really good and stuck. Well, I guess I could try moving this to the side and then wiggling the, uh, it's probably like a 3HA5 or something out of here. Okay, so we can get that one down. This one's been replaced. This is not an Admiral tube. Well, it is. It's just a newer date stamp. And yeah, let's see. No, 3J, uh, 3GK5. Oh, it's close. Anyways, let's reach around here and see if we can work this out of its socket. <sighs> a terrible design. 8BM11. Yep, there are some crusty looking pins there. So let's uh, scrape them off. I'm going to have to touch up the sound again because obviously the detector was only working well in the crusty position it was in. As soon as it got moved, it changed. I'll just put some D5 on the pins and stick it back in there. Or, I wouldn't say stick it since it's uh, kind of difficult to get it in place. Let me get some deoxid. And I'm just going to do a little spritz of the pins here. 
Not a whole lot. And then, because I can't see anything, I can peer down in here and see where the key is. Kind of orient the tube in that direction. All right, we're at least adjacent to the socket. Okay, I'll work that in there a little bit, get some of the contact cleaner into the pins. Oh, and I think I said I needed to resolder that socket too earlier. I think that socket was kind of cruddy. Scrape the tuner tube real fast. Can't really see what orientation that is. So it's just going to be a guessing game until it catches the key. This is why I have such a hatred for compact sets like this. This set really should have been transistorized. I'm sure if this was a transistor set, it would have had a lot fewer problems. There we go. What a pain. All right, then we're going to have to retweak our sound again Let's wait for this thing to warm up Yeah, the detector sounds a little crappy. That's peaked. That speaker's gotten worse too. But so far, we got no twitchies. It's a really stable looking picture. But this looks really good. The picture on this is pretty sweet now. Really sharp. Hard to really tell. I mean, it's clean, but the camera really doesn't show it. Yeah, the only bit of annoyance is that speaker. That speaker's just in bad shape. Uh, but the amount of effort that I would have to go through to replace it, and I don't have a replacement. At least I don't think I do. No, I think I already checked that. I don't really have a replacement for that. Uh, but yes, we do need to resolder this socket. That socket's looking kind of poor. Just touch this up. So at least that'll be in better shape. This one here looks good. This one here looks good. This looks good. 
All the rest of these are okay. I'm guessing because of the heat buildup localized in this area that this one just gets hotter and that's why it got all crusty. Uh, now as far as the speaker, I don't think I have anything this size. It's a weird size. It's like between two and a half and three inches. I could probably finagle something in there. But really, that would require some major, major disassembly. Interesting how they have the second anode high voltage way over here. When the cage is right here, they could have done a shorter lead and done a better job on that. And we did get it to work a little better by bending the frame a little bit to fix the voice coil misalignment, but that's kind of... That was uh, only a temporary fix, I guess. I don't see any easy way of resolving this. I can take the chassis loose a little bit. And we could see if we could, like, snake it out. But I have my doubts here. I don't really think it... Just doesn't seem like that's going to work out. But to replace it and tear the whole chassis down is going to be like a, a big deal. So I'll try to do it, but it's just becoming a time vampire. And the picture on it looks so nice right now. That's the only thing holding it back is the crappy sound quality. Yeah, that plastic is pretty well stripped out. I wonder if this thing took a fall in its lifetime. Come on out. I'm not fully out yet, I guess. All this old, brittle plastic always has, has me worried because all you have to do is make a mistake and you'll break part of the set. And then good luck trying to make all that work back together again. So I'm going to take this loose as much as I can without having to disconnect everything and take a bunch of bracketry and stuff off and see how much room we have to get to a speaker. Because the speaker thing is really bothering me. And of course we're going to have to take all the knobs off. Those are pretty unique. Definitely wouldn't want to lose those. Well, let's give a yank to the tuner knob here. And let's reset this. Make it easier to take off. There's your oscillator adjustment there too if you're curious about that. Alright, let's see how much wiggle room we have. Seems like something's still holding it on. Something is still holding this chassis together. Looks like it's a screw. That screw way back in there. That's still holding it together. This is going to be fun to put that one back in. in there hopefully grab it there we go uh, let's see how much wiggle room we got now that's a little better still something holding it back all right so that there that's about as much room as I get if I unsolder the speaker leads maybe See if that helps us a little bit only marginally but that may be enough that I can get the speaker out of here without being, being too destructive let's see here pry the little clips up 
hopefully. Yeah, that one ain't cooperating. Yeah, I figure if I can get the speaker out, I might be able to correct the problem with the uh, voice coil rubbing. At least that's my hope anyway. I can get this clip out. Yep, see, there we go. Broken plastic. No bueno. But we can hear... Definitely got some rubbing issues. All right. Yeah, this is definitely... Let me just double check and see if I have the right size. Yeah, it looks like the smallest thing I have is uh, four and a half inch. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but this is where the warpage occurs. It's causing the voice coil to pinch like that. So let's see if I can get the whole shebang out here. This looks like it's been glued in. So we may have to unsolder the rest of this. Just make some marks. And we'll unsolder it. And we'll see if we can do some minor repairs on the speaker. But we got to get it out first. And let me just push that back. Ooh, big glob of solder on my bench I just leaned into. That was fun. Okay, so here's our rubbing little speaker. And the first thing I want to do is get the voice coil cap off. And I'm just going to very carefully cut that away. I'm using a super sharp X Acto knife. And we're just going around the perimeter nice and slow. There's no reason why you need to be in a rush here. I want to try and reuse this if I can. If not, I can always make something else as a dust cover. Now, the problem of it is, is now this is all starting to crumble and fall apart. So there may not be anything left to use once I get this up. Yeah, the former is starting to disintegrate, so... Alright, abort that idea. Just cut it away. And we'll figure out another dust cap to put on there instead. Alright, we do have some rust here in the gap. There's definitely some moisture issues. I'm going to turn it upside down and tap it to try to get any kind of loose fragments out of the voice coil gap that I can. Sometimes you can do that with a mild frequency too. Like 200 hertz or something at about a half a watt. Of course this is 0.3 watts so that would probably kill it. So maybe not a good idea to do that.
trying to see if there's any obvious thing in here about the voice coil. Any trash that I can get out of here easily enough. Doesn't look like there is. <laughs> Blow some into the gap. All right. It's hard to tell whether the garbage is between the gap here or if it's on the outside where the coil is wound, but there is definitely a, a load of trash in here. So I'm going to get a piece of photographic film and we're going to run it through the gap and see if we can pick any trash up. All right, so I've tried working a piece of photographic film around the gap and a whole bunch of stuff, and it's just, there's junk on the other side of the former that I can't see, so this really has to get disassembled. So what I'm doing is, is we're desoldering the voice coil lead-ins, and I'm going to very carefully try to disassemble the speaker and see if I can't correct the garbage in the voice coil gap. But this is going to be very challenging because I have to go really slow. And I have to not destroy what's there, which is even trickier. Because this speaker's been in a harsh environment. It's very, uh, very worn out. But I want to try to fix it just because I want to try to fix it. Save as much of this as I can. And we got to get in here and separate this. Yeah, this is like surgical work for me. And I know what you're saying. It's like, you know, why didn't he just get another speaker? He's got the old one out. It's a weird size, man. It's not a typical 3-inch. It measures like 2.67 inches or something like that. It's really bizarre. And the smallest one I have in stock is a four and a half inch which ain't gonna work either and i'm feeling adventurous so if i absolutely have to i will replace the speaker but right now i want to try and save this one whatever means i can Because if I can, then, you know, go me, but. I'd also rather just save the damn thing rather than not save the damn thing. And we're getting around the perimeter. That's good. And then once we've done that, then we'll probably have to get at the spider some, get the spider up. Just about free. If you're wondering why I'm grunting, it's because I have severe arthritis in my hands and doing something like this is really painful for me. All 
All right, so it looks like we got the cone detached. So that's a start. And then very carefully, I'm going to try to go around the edge here and we're going to detach the spider. This thing is just so fragile. I can see the glue seam of the spider right there, so I'm just going to very carefully cut that away. That way we can just glue it back down. This is the kind of work that'll definitely give you the sweats. It's just really precision. You gotta be at absolute attention. You gotta make sure that you don't make any mistakes that will make it irreparable. And I'm feeling like I'm kind of on my A game today. That's why I'm attempting it. I'm sure there are people out there that are far better at this than me. I'm cutting right at the glue seam here. Of course, there's always one stubborn spot. Are we all the way around yet? There we go. Looks like we are. Let's see if this will just pull out. It does. So it's hard to see, but there's all this trash and stuff here along the voice coil. And now that we have uh, cleared that, let me get a Q-tip of some kind. Just make sure that uh, we get all the trash out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to run this along here. Camera doesn't show. There's a lot of powdery looking garbage on it. So now we can get down in here with the uh, with the film and hopefully clean out the gap. You'll be able to hear lots of crusties in there. Mmm. Snap, crackle, pop. Nutritious and delicious. Oh yeah, there's some crust that came up there. I know what you might be thinking. Why doesn't he use like sandpaper or something? Nope, that's going to introduce more little shavings and stuff into the gap. I want to avoid that. There's this one little section here that definitely keeps getting caught on things. <laughs> and I just blow real hard. Hopefully that blows good chunks of the debris out. And we'll just continue to work at it. And my goal is, is to be able to circle around in here and not hear any crusty noise, which would tell me that the gap's cleaned out. <laughs> that certainly is better. Hear a lot less noise now. So before we completely glue and reassemble this, we'll do a brief test. And I'm just going to set this voice coil back into the gap. Now 
what we're doing is trying to find a clean spot. But you know, that's kind of hard to get at. So a little bit more cleaning is necessary, it looks like. Where did my piece of photographic film go? There we go. Needs a little bit more cleaning. But uh, I am going to try to assemble it once we get it as clean as possible. And it's, you know, a 50-50. It's either going to work or it's not. But it's so far at least better than it was. It's not frozen up. <laughs> All right, let's try again. problem of it is I can't really gauge what's good and what's not because I haven't been able to center the voice coil yet. And it could be things are just horribly warped beyond usability. Seems like something there is kind of warped. Nothing catching there. Like the voice coil is kind of distorted or something, which is entirely possible. Could have been heat warped it. We just don't really know. So it's kind of annoying. So pushing on it, it seems like I can get a clear spot, or a clearer spot. I'm also trying to make sure that this is not warped too badly. Yeah, I don't know. It's not looking so great right now. It may just be that there is parts of this that are damaged that are not going to cooperate. Just run up my finger around here. There's still some corrosion and little bits here that are going to upset how this goes back in for sure. Yeah, so not sure if that's going to work out. We have to really reassemble it. Uh, what I'm going to do is get two photographic shims to cover the span of the voice coil gap as the glue sits up. And then we'll basically just see if it's going to work or not. All right, so I got my glue here. And I got my shim. And we're just going to put a little bead around where the spider's going to go. Assuming it will come to the end here on the cold morning that is today. We're actually getting down into the low 40s here, which is kind of unheard of this time of year. Usually that isn't until January, February, so it's definitely colder this year. All right, get our glue set up. And we're going to put this into place. 
install our shims. Assuming I can do that. And of course, it's going to want to fight me. All right, there's one. Oh, was one. And let's see if we can get the other one in there. It doesn't want to cooperate, neither. Thankfully, the glue doesn't set up instantly, otherwise I'd have a bit of a problem. All right, there's the other shim. And my hopes are that as this dries, we can take a look down in here, make sure it's tamped down. Yep, it is. It's starting to get tacky. Just kind of make sure the glue sets up right. I'm sure this is boring you guys to death. I wish I knew an easier way to take care of this problem. But I've learned the hard way that just buying the speaker doesn't always work. All right. So it's gotten tacky. Pull these out. And we'll see if we can finish centering it. Trying to find the sweet spot here, but not being very successful. All right, that's a little better, a little less noise there. I think now it's time to take a stab at uh, gluing down the outer edge. What a mess. If it makes it work, I'm all for it. At this point, I just want the thing to work again.
Okay, so now I need to get this thing all centered up. I still think it's got some trash in there that we can't see or get to. Yeah, just no matter what, we're not uh, not centering up well. Thought we had something earlier, but apparently not. We're getting closer, but there's still trash in there. Coming together, though. I think as things settle, it's starting to get quieter. Let's see which side went down here. Worse, worse, less, and better. So obviously we have a, a warpage problem over here. Yeah, this one might just be doomed. We just might have to find another speaker for it. trying to find that sweet spot where it won't make any noise just hasn't been happening try and run the film around the former let's see if we can true it up a little bit Got quiet. All right. That's a good thing. Huh. It's settled in a good place. All right. Well, I'm going to let that cure. We'll make a little fuzzy cover or something for this and then put this all back together. All right. So I got some goop around the surround to stiffen it up a little bit when I push on it. No more scary rub. So that's good. 
my little ghetto fabulous dust cover there so yeah the only thing left really is uh stick this thing in real time hook it all back up i still have to solder the voice coil leads back in here Trying to fish these up in here is really fun. Come on, so close. All right, there's one. Add a little bit of solder to that. And then we got to do the other one, which is even more fun because there's a, a thingy in the way. I think I'm going to cheat a little bit. Go from the top down because I don't trust myself in not breaking this off. Going from the bottom side, I mean, we can give it one try here, but I don't think it wants to do it. I really don't want to break this, so it's not going to kill anything to do it from the top down. course it doesn't want to stay now so maybe that's its way of telling me do it from the bottom up like you're supposed to ho 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 is it going to do it hard to tell from where my vantage is but let's see Then of course, once that's done, we need to get a meter and validate that we still have voice coil continuity because we sure have been messing around with this one. Yeah. Hopefully it's still there and I didn't kill it. All right, eight ohms. Okay, so the ultimate test, of course, is to put it back into the set and see how it sounds. Uh, we're back to being crunchy again. Might just be how it is. Okay, so we have that clip there. And then, of course, I have to find the other one that flew off. Dig out the broken piece of plastic. Probably can't see what I'm doing here right now, but that's all right. I'm trying to dig out the plastic here that broke off inside of this clip. All right, and then very carefully push the clip back on. 
hopefully without breaking off this tab because it is very brittle. All right. Now we got to solder everything back up. And then put the chassis back together and hope it works. And of course, I'm going to have stuff fighting me all the way. All right, which one is that over there? Green one's the far one, which also has to coincide with the two blues. Black is the center one. Yeah, at this point, if it still rubs a little bit, that's just how it is. There's really not a whole lot I can do to fix that problem. Which sucks, but that's how it is. But now we know it's at least possible to get this apart enough that we can figure out a way to get a speaker in there if he absolutely wants to do that personally <clears throat> I usually use an outboard sound source for my sets anyways unless they got really good sound in them now let's reattach this And let's reattach this. Do it a little further up, maybe. Nope, I didn't want to take. And this one wanted to jump ship. All this for the possibility of a speaker repair, not even a, a conclusion of a speaker repair, but the possibility, just the possibility. And we don't even know if this is going to fix it. All right. Got everything soldered up. Let's uh, put it back together. Assuming we can do that without too much of a hassle. Yep, things are just going to get bumped and stuff because that's just how it is. And you're probably not going to be able to see the majority of me doing this. Because I do have to get things oriented in such a way that I can successfully get everything back in here without pinching wires or breaking things. So at the very least, let's get the screws started, what ones we can get started. Something about this one doesn't feel right. And I don't want to crank it down too tight in case that it decides to jump ship. Let's try a different screw in this hole. This one's going in a lot easier. 
All right, that's that side. Then we got this side here. This cable is hell bent on getting in my way today. Always make sure to reattach your ground strap. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Picture tubes don't like to be ungrounded. Okay. Then there's this one over here, and then there's the really fun one that's uh, embedded down in the tuner. try to get the other one down in there that's like buried and unfortunately there's no easy way to see what I'm doing yeah, I can try fishing it in there but you can't even really see it well, let me get that in there and then we'll turn it on and test it now it's time to see if we made any significant improvement on the sound I have no idea whether this is going to work better or worse. Well, there you go. This one's got a half a tail. Oh, that one's got a little now. Oh, that one's got a half a tail. Which kind of leads me to believe there might be some Australians in there because they can be more of a full tail. Oh, I didn't fine-tune it when I did the sound adjustment last. But we have full sound. That's pretty cool. So let me tweak the detector a little bit. Alright. Look at that. Nice clean sound. Looks like we fixed the speaker. They're a lot of fun. They have unlimited energy. They love to play. They're available. We'll keep track on the website. And you can pick them up and play with them. Thanks for watching, everybody. Very cool. So much energy. Have a And there is a bit of a sound beat in the picture. I see that a lot on Admirals. And you can tweak the traps and stuff, but it never gets better. It's just a defect of these. But hey, we've got a sweet picture. We've got good sound. Nice clean picture. We still got a little bit of Twitchy McTwitcherson here, but. Right, Maggie? Sounds good, looks good. So, I think I'm going to stop here, and we're going to box this one. So this has been uh, quite an experience. But uh, we got it running well enough to make a good picture and good sound, and now it's going to go back to its owner. So I hope you guys enjoy this series, and uh, next we'll get into a little bit something different, an older radio, and we'll see where we go from that one. But anyways, thanks for watching. More stuff to come.